This is the Tilter Nucleus Nano 2, and it is a wireless follow focus system, which means that I can control my manual lenses like this 40mm Nisi Athena wirelessly. Now these are pretty common in the industry and are used almost exclusively on bigger sets because on bigger sets when you're shooting movies and stuff like that, you're gonna be using manual focus. Usually you'd have a dedicated person to be pulling the focus separate from the operator, but these can also be very useful as a solar operator. So basically how it works is there's a motor on the camera rig right there. It's onto the 15 millimeter rods and that goes onto the gear of the focus ring of that lens. And most cinema lenses have a like standard gear pitch. So any focus motor will work with it. And then the other part is the hand wheel here, which means that I can control the focus from anywhere in the room or within the range of the wireless system, which I'm not hundred percent sure what it is, but it's decent, but that's not all it can do. This system in particular, the Nucleus Nano 2 from Tilta, also can connect to your camera via Bluetooth and control things. Like it even has a record button right here. So if you connect it via Bluetooth to your camera, you can hit record from this. There's also a function button that you can remap to different things. Right now I have it set to its default, which is A and B points. So that means that I can have a marker here. You can actually probably hear it vibrate right there. And then if I rack to where I had it in focus there, so then where it vibrates there, that's gonna be that point there. So I can feel where I'm, where the focus is at without having to look at the numbers or even look at the monitor to see where it's in focus. And then as you can see there, there's also a zoom rocker. Now, right now I don't have it connected to my camera, so I'm not gonna be, it's not gonna do anything when I use it, but you can hook up up to four motors to their system. So you could control zoom, iris, focus, and then another thing like a variable ND on, in a map box or something like that. So you could set the wheel to do your focus. You could set the rocker to do your zoom, and then you can swipe to a different page to do something else. For example, iris, if you want to change the iris wirelessly, which I feel like is a little bit less common. Usually you'd set your iris and then you'd use that for the whole shot. But for times where you do need to change depth of field or exposure in the shot, that could be useful. On the back of the hand unit, it also has this NATO rail attachment. So it's, it does have pins in there because it, it can, you can get handles that have a electronic connection. So you can power this or even hook it up to a focus handle. So you can actually control stuff with the handle as well with this on, on it. So that's what those pins are for, which means it's not a sliding NATO rail. It actually just locks down that way. So you actually sort of clip it on rather than sliding it on because you don't want to damage those pins. But it means you can mount it to anything that you can put a NATO rail on. And the whole kit comes in this case, which is, is pretty handy to be able to just put stuff in the case if you're having to break down your rig the entire time. This is the basic kit, which just comes with one motor and the hand unit. So there's the spots for that there. And then underneath you have all the other accessories. So this is a ring for any lenses that don't have, you know, a geared focus ring. So you can put it on like photo lenses and stuff. You've got a 10 centimeter, 15 millimeter rod, which means you can just mount that on with this rod mount. So you screw this on to your camera anywhere and then put the rod in that and then you can mount the motor to that rod or like I'm doing now I just have a base plate with rods in it so then I can just put it straight onto that so I actually don't need to use that but that means that you can mount it without having a base plate with multiple rods you could just have a single rod with a single motor on it and it'd be a lot simpler and like I've already mentioned the main uses for this would be as a focus puller wirelessly so you would have somebody in this case, it's me, you know, pulling focus so I can change the focus of this manual lens. A lot of the time you'd have a first AC, which I actually made a video about my experience as a first AC for the first time. If you're interested, go check that out, where I did a lot of focus pulling with the small rig Magic Fizz system, which is sort of like small rigs equivalent to this. And it's fairly similar in most ways, but you could also mount it directly to your camera. And even though it's wireless, it's right next to the motor and you can still control the motor from right there. So it would act almost as if it's an all in one follow focus system where it's just all connected, but it means you wouldn't need to have that as well if you want to go handheld 
and pull focus at the same time. And I think probably one of the biggest problems that it solves, which isn't really a problem, just sort of it makes something easier, and that is exactly this. For me as a solo creator sort of thing, the majority of stuff that I shoot, I'm by myself. So it means that I don't have to be actually turning the focus ring on these manual lenses. Now that I'm using manual lenses a lot, I can, you know, sit back here and then if I'm a little bit out of focus, I can adjust it like that. Or if I lean forward, I can still keep myself in focus without having to adjust it on the barrel there because it's too far away right now, especially since I like longer lenses anyway. I don't want to have to sit super close, so I have to adjust it by hand. And for me right now, that's sort of the main problem that it solves and the main way it helps me is shooting these videos on manual lenses. And while right now it's probably not the biggest deal, I could just use a photo lens and no one would really notice and just use autofocus because I'm using very clean spherical lenses. But if I was to get something like anamorphic lenses, then there's kind of no other choice than to use it manually. So that would be sort of the case that I would really want to use this over using a photo lens and autofocus. So apart from using it to get focus on myself using manual lenses, obviously, like I mentioned before, there is the use of having a first AC, having another person pull focus for you while you're operating. And then you can also have it mounted directly to the camera, like I mentioned before. And the way that I do that is with this 15 millimeter rod to NATO adapter. So that slides onto the 15 millimeter rod there. And then that is a NATO rail. So I can basically just clip the hand wheel onto the NATO rail like that. And then we have, and then that is just on the rail on the camera. So then it's a lot easier to mount it rather than having to add another NATO rail somewhere else. And also it puts it in a really good position for when you're hand holding the camera and you can just sort of reach down to where it would be if it was like an all in one follow focus system. This adapter can also be used to mount other NATO rail stuff. It's just, or anything else that's got quarter 20 screws on it as well. But the main reason that I got this is to mount the hand wheel of the Nucleus Nano 2 to one of the rails on my rig. Now this system does have a few limitations though. And the biggest one is gonna be, it's still manual focus. So you do have to have somebody adjusting focus. It's not a LiDAR system. It's not trying to compete with the DJI Focus Pro or anything like that. So it is still manual and you still need somebody operating the wheel. Another limitation that it has is the motors can only be powered by USB-C. There is no way to have a battery directly on them. Like the Small Rig Magic Fizz, for example, there is an adapter that comes with that kit to put an NPF battery on there. Whereas these ones just have two USB-C ports. So you basically need a V-mount battery or something similar to power the motors themselves. And I tried, you cannot just plug the motor into your camera and have it powered that way, at least with the FX30, maybe other cameras, I don't know. However, it does have two USB-C ports per motor, so you can daisy chain the power pass through if you have multiple motors on the same lens. Like if you had a big cinema zoom lens and you had three motors on there, one for focus, iris, and zoom, you would have one cable going to the first motor and then you would have another cable between each of the other motors to power them so you don't have to plug them all into the battery. You just plug one into the battery and then you plug each of them into each other. And then when it comes to like actually using it on different lenses, one thing I've noticed is that even using a system like this is you still have to sort of know the lens because lenses will have different scaling, I guess, with the, with the ring. Usually the closer focus you are, like if I go like real close up here, the difference between, you know, there and there is going to be we could even test it, right? that's like, that was like 300. Whereas if I go all the way back to where I am now, that's at 274 all the way to infinity. So the difference between, you know, what's this like a meter and a bit to infinity is about the same as minimum focus to like 60 centimeters. So you still need to know the lens because if you, the closer you get, the more you have to turn it to move a certain distance. But that just sort of comes with practice and knowing the lens. And when it comes to the features that I probably won't use, at least right now, is the camera control, because I don't really have a reason to use the camera control. I leave my cameras in airplane mode most of the time just to save battery. Maybe that doesn't make a big difference, but I've just always done that. So I don't 
connect this via Bluetooth to my cameras to like, you know, control stuff like that. I could, but I don't really see much of a benefit in having that camera control because the only thing that it could really do for me is recording, but it's easy enough to just hit record before I sit down. And as I only have the basic kit, I only have one motor, so I can't use, you know, focus, iris, and zoom, or even just two of those because I don't have the extra motors for those. So right now I only use it for focus on my manual lenses. If I need to do manual focus on autofocus lenses, for some reason, I can use that. I have the, the strip that comes in the case that I can just put on there. Although depending on the lens, it can kind of be a little bit annoying because I, f I found that with the Sigma 24 to 70, the strip is like way too long and it kind of gets in the way because the focus throw on that lens is quite long. So I'm not a big fan of that. I would rather just use it on, you know, properly manual lenses. But that's a bit of an overview of the Tilta Nucleus Nano 2. Now Tilta did send this to me, but I don't have to make this video and they have no input on this video. Do with that what you will. But if you're interested in the lens that I'm using right now, the Nisi Athena 40 millimeter, go check that out. Video right there and do all the other things. I'll see you in the next one. Okay, bye. That was a weird outro. That is not my normal outro. Anyway, okay, bye.